How's it going everyone? Got a couple things to cover in this video. We have yet another update on PlayStation Stars. Brief update here. It seems to have a secret invite only tier that is being revealed right now as well. We'll talk all about that. A recently released JRPG will be getting a free update in early November. A JRPG I enjoyed but had some issues with Soul Hackers too. We'll talk all about that. Guilty Gear Strive is getting a free to play cross platform play open beta test which is set for october the 14th and one of the beloved franchises of yesteryear could it be coming back crystal dynamics has the opportunity to potentially do a new legacy of kane title but they are rolling out a survey which you can fill out for yourself as far as a legacy of kane is concerned so we'll talk that at the end of this video first of all playstation stores appears to have a secret invite only diamond tier as noted on push square the fifth tier which is supposedly called diamond is referenced in images and animations hosted on the playstation website along with a description that reads and this is kind of wild in an endless sea of stars it seems like there's nowhere to hide but you wouldn't be here if you let challenges like that stop you welcome to level five i have no idea what that entails but it looks like there's another tier to playstation stars i imagine stars as a whole is gonna be something that is a little bit fluid in the sense that it's gonna fluctuate offerings and what it exactly is over the coming weeks and months as they really try to pat down um what exactly playstation stars is ultimately gonna be i know there's been a lot of controversy regarding the customer support deal let's see it roll out over here stateside and ultimately what that is gonna mean for the long term uh the playstation stars stateside rollout is very very soon it'll be happening october the 5th so if you have any concern if you have any wonder as far as what it's gonna entail if you live here in the states you're gonna get answers to all those questions very very soon obviously i think for most people the most exciting thing is the fact that you're gonna be able to accrue points and then you can redeem those points to get playstation wallet credit i mean even five to ten dollars of wallet credit can go a pretty long way with the billion plus sales that are ran on the playstation store so just having an incentive to keep you into the ecosystem and spending more money on PlayStation and ultimately this is a way for them to offer you something in return but also get your investment within that PlayStation bubble and spending more money on PlayStation products so we'll see how it turns out uh hopefully accruing points isn't too difficult and as far as collectibles go like man i know some people are memeing on it being like who the hell is into this well trophies were like a big deal for a long time and they're still a big deal like there are people that fiend for platinum trophies and trust me sometimes i get into my mode where i'm fiending for platinum trophies i'm like damn it this is gonna be the year where i'll platinum every game i play and i literally had one of those phases like a couple months ago and i was like yeah i'm not built for this anymore i ain't in my high school days anymore where i can chug a two liter diet pepsi and play until six in the morning on the latest new releases with my gamefly subscription like those days are kind of gone for me but nonetheless um i still get those days uh as far as you know just for a little bit i am fiending for my platinum trophies but we'll see how playstation stars rolls out ultimately again october the 5th is when it's gonna be here stateside and then over in europe it'll be following up quickly thereafter on october the 13th as far as the diamonds here goes, uh, your guess is as good as mine. Alright, moving on from that, I could talk a lot about Soul Hackers 2. It's a game that I enjoyed, came out back in August, had some issues with it, but we'll get to that in a second. Atlas will be releasing a free update for Soul Hackers 2 in early November that'll be adding new content to the game and new functionality. A dash function added a dash function to Ringo's movement. In dungeons and fields, you can switch between normal and dash as you like with the addition of the dash function. The effect of the summoner skill, Assassin's Stride, has been changed to become undetectable to enemies for a fixed distance and then high speed battle mode added a high speed battle mode to battle you can switch between normal and high speed as you like on top of that some adjustments have been added as well adjusted termination processing of loading screen tips to speed up load times revised choice controls during soul level increase when selecting a shop from the city map you will now fast travel directly to the inside of the shop if you play the game that's actually a notable fix to the game and will streamline the traversal in the game adjusted frequency of enemy appearances in dungeons i'm i'm curious to see what that adjusted frequency is because i noticed quite a few uh, enemy appearances in dungeons adjust as ease of inheriting skills during demon fusion and other minor adjustments okay so soul hackers 2 as a whole absolutely do not spend 60 dollars on this game it's a game that has a lot of quality elements. I thought the soundtrack was great. I think the main character in Ringo, one of the most likable main characters of the year, she's just a fantastic main character. The rest of the cast is okay. Uh, I found Arrow to be likable, and the rest of the cast in general is pretty good. Um, 
there are some issues with the game from a gameplay standpoint. The dungeon design is just completely ridiculous sometimes and uh, really mundane at other times. That was probably the drawback of the game. The gameplay itself, standard turn-based affair, but some of the dungeon design really left a lot to be desired. Overall, I would say the game is pretty decent. If you're a fan of JRPGs, you'll end up enjoying the game. It's a lengthy game as well, and it could be pretty challenging on harder difficulties. So I would say, you know, if you can get it for $30 to $40, and by the way, it was recently available at $40 at a bunch of retailers, so, you know, you might have gotten it that way. I think $40, perfectly acceptable price. $60 is just a little high for me. Um, you know, $30 to $40, I think, would be a great buy, and I think come Black Friday, you'll be able to get that regularly. Again, I really like the game uh, in a lot of areas. I thought narratively it was strong. I thought soundtrack was fantastic. I think Ringo, again, as a main character, was great. Um, but again, some drawbacks as well that really hampered the overall experience. Experience. But uh, hopefully they keep Soul Hackers going because what I saw out of the game, uh, there was a lot of potential there. All right, moving on from that, Guilty Gear Strive will be getting a free-to-play crossplay open beta test. This is set for October the 14th until October the 17th. Online multiplayer between PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and PC. With this uh, open beta test, you'll get all 21 characters, including all currently released downloadable content characters, tutorial mode, mission mode, survival mode, training mode, versus computer, versus two-player, uh, online match, combo maker, digital figure, and gallery will all be available. Online multiplayer between players on the different PS4, PS5, and Steam platforms is possible. Online multiplayer is available without a PlayStation Plus subscription, so no Plus subscription required to even uh, try out the game. A network connection, obviously, is required, and uh, yeah, save data cannot be carried over to the main game, of course, and uh, yeah, Guilty Gear Strive was a very, very well-received fighting title. Uh, obviously, it's Arc System Works, and they've got some of the most stylistic presentation when it comes to a fighting game. Their games are just so slick in terms of visual style, and uh, soundtrack-wise, Guilty Gear Strive is also pretty good. Obviously, this is more of a technical fighter. My days for these games are uh, kind of gone. The Blaze Blue Calamity trigger days for me. Can live in 2009, but uh, I can mess around with these games and have some fun. Guilty Gear Strive is currently available for PS5 and PS4 and PC, and a uh, Xbox Series and Xbox One release are planned for spring of 2023. Also, will be hitting uh, Xbox Game Pass with that release. But free to play cross platform network beta test, you can check that out. Lastly, I do want to note that Crystal Dynamics is hosting a survey that you can fill out for yourself an in depth survey in regard to a legacy of Kane as an IP and how fans would like the series to make a comeback and just general thoughts on Legacy of Kane. I know Legacy of Kane is a franchise that so many people have a strong attachment towards. It's not a franchise I really grew up playing. I had a friend that had it on PS1 and I remember dabbling around with it. I played it uh, more recently on like PSP. Um, but yeah, it wasn't something I was super into, but man, whenever I talk about games that should get a remake and a remaster, like Legacy of Kain is right up there in the comment section, and just generally speaking, when I talk to people, like, people loved Legacy of Kain. I know a lot of people wanted, like, Blue Point to do a full-on remake of Legacy of Kain, but who knows? Crystal Dynamics, the world is their oyster now as far as what they can do in the future. I mean, they've got a lot of big projects that they could do, but Legacy of Kain is something that I think... You know, Absence makes the heart grow fonder, and Legacy of Kane has been gone for so long that I think if you do, like, a full-on remake or a new title, uh, I think it would do pretty well. And I'm not even saying you gotta do go, you know, full-on Bluepoint-style Demon Souls remake. I think if you just make an upgraded version, it doesn't have to have the biggest budget in the world. I think just off the name, as long as it's a decent game, uh, people will check it out, but... And that's my two cents as far as somebody that wasn't, you know, crazy about Legacy of Kane. I have nothing against it, just when I was growing up, it was all about JRPGs in that era and Mega Man, really. <laughs> but, uh, that, and Spyro, and Spyro for sure. But nonetheless, that's gonna do it for me. Again, PlayStation Stars appears to have a secret invite-only diamond tier. We'll see how that turns out again October 5th for the launch of that. Soul Hackers 2 getting a free update in early November. Don't drop $60 on that game, but I did think it was a fairly decent JRPG. Guilty Gear Strive free-to-play cross-platform play open beta test is set for October 14th to the 17th, and can Legacy of Kane be making a comeback? It seems like Crystal Dynamics is at least having it in consideration as far as them having a survey. That's gonna do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.